Hi, you are watching Kolsky Drones. Welcome back. Today we've got the Hubson 507A or the X4 Star review and flight footage. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we're going to have a look at this. This is the X4 Star. I've actually had this a bit, but I've never flown it until the other day. I've no idea why. I just forgot about it that I had it. So it is a GPS enabled, tiny little Hubsan drone. It's got a 720 camera on the front, it's got brushed geared motors and it runs on, if I can get the battery out of the back, because it's tight to get out of this, so it runs on this, which is a 7.6 volt 550 mAh battery. The one down thing about this drone, I'll tell you straight away, is you do not get good flight time, you only get about 6-7 minutes out of it. Um, I've had eight, that's why I have three batteries for it, but it's dead fun to fly. So, the battery pops in here, like this, they are proprietary as you can see unfortunately. It goes in there, and then, let's just turn it on. You have to hold the button in, I think it's for three seconds, before it boots, there you go. Now it does your famous, hubs and hum, can you hear it? I don't know why Hubsons do that, but they do. So, it's app controlled. And as you're aware, I do not like app controlled phones, but let's have a look at it. The app it runs on is X Hubsan. Well, so we connect it up to the Wi Fi first, sorry. So, we need to connect it up to your Wi Fi network, and the Wi Fi network is given out. It's Hubson 507A, which is its official name, or X4 Star. It's called various things. But I think 507 it is its actual proper title. So we're going to connect to that. We're in. And now we've got the X Hubson app. We select the device you want because this works on various different models, but we want the X4 Pro. We're going to enter the device and we're going to enter main interface. You have to give it a bit of time, but there you go. So we're in we go. Now it's going to tell us to calibrate the compass, so I'm going to have to do it just so I can get it off the screen, but to calibrate the compass, it's your typical hubsan. Round and round and round, it'll tell you to go the other way on your screen, and when it does, it will clear. There we go, so now it's gone. Cancel that. Now we need, every time you do this, it's going to want you to bind your phone to the drone, hit OK. And now it's going to do a GPS accuracy test. Now it's only using this in follow me mode. I'm obviously going to skip this because inside it's never going to pass it. Outside, if you want to use follow me mode, you have to do this. So skip it. So there we go, we're in. As you can see, weak GPS signal. That's your image. Now the app is really, really nice. So on the app you've got your home button, so return to your other screen, altitude, distance, speed, your signal, your signal from this, your amount of satellites, your percentage of battery life on the drone, and a settings button, which you can set up your parameters for your waypoints, you can look at your map, standard satellite or night, and then you've got your relay, so you can buy a relay box for this, so your signal from your phone, it, it's the same size as your phone, it clips on the back, and you hold it with that, and it gives you much better distance, and then you've got your details about your, the quad. You've then got take off and land or return to home. And this is where you have your settings. So in here you've got waypoint mode, follow me mode, orbit mode. So if you go into waypoints, please adjust the map to draw. It's a simple thing of draw. There you go. So you put your waypoint on and then you'd go submit, it would upload that, it was not going to do it because I failed the accuracy test but that's how it works and then you've got oh, follow me mode, again you're going to have the same problem because it's never going to pass it and then you've got orbit mode, same again, you must pass a GPS, it does outside obviously, it passes it straight away so that's the app, go back to the view from the, the drone itself now, I do not like flying phone apps and I've never flown it without this. So, this is the Bluetooth controller. 
Let's turn it on. Now this can be finicky to connect, but I'm going to do it, see if it'll pick it up anyway. So go into here, go into your controller, and then go down to where it says we're using remote control. Now you see you can have this junior, senior or advanced. That's simply adjusting the rates. I don't recommend flying it in junior, I recommend flying it in senior, even if you're new, because it's just too sluggish at turning. So we're going to use the remote control. It's going to look for it, it's going to find it, and we're going to connect it. Bluetooth connection is successfully. There you go straight away. It comes with this very nice holder for your phone. So let me just take it off the camera and clip it in for you. There you go. I've had to push it over because it's in the way of my on and off switch. But this is how I fly it. And with this, I love flying it. So, like I said, the flight time isn't fantastic. It really isn't. And the fact that it's got all these different modes on there, I think are virtually impossible to use, especially the waypoint mode. You'd have to take off with a freshly charged battery and make sure you're in a very small area. It does return to home when it has an issue, and the return to home is quite accurate. It's not like a DJI. It's a cheap drone. I think I paid, in total for this, £70 with the controller, this, and then I paid another £10, because it was selling the batteries off, for two more batteries. So we've got two batteries for five each. So I paid £80 for what's on the table. Which I think is decent. It comes also with a charger and a spare set of props. I'm not going to show you a spare set of props. But this is the charger. Your battery goes in. Now, so you push the battery in and you think it's in. And this will light up red. A little light. It has to flash to charge. You have to force it in that little bit more. And it will start charging. Charging time varies. From a flat battery it takes about 50 minutes. So, that's the charger. It's obviously USB. But it's a 7.4 volt. So you need to have a decent plug that you're plugging it into. If you try and charge this off your computer, it's going to take forever. So that's the drone. Uh, how, how do I rate it with all the other stuff on the market? There's a lot of brushless drones on the market, brushless GPS drones. But this is £80. You'll, you've seen I've reviewed the SG900S and the Vizio. They are much newer than this. The camera image on this is only 720, but you'll see from the video it's as good as them, if not... It's as good as them because it has, makes a better job of holding its position in the air because it's hubs are and the GPS is better on it. It drifts flat in the wind because the, the video you can see is done in the wind so there is a bit of drift there. But for the money you can't go wrong. This thing's totally let down by these. Absolutely totally let down by these. If you put a, a normal battery holder in the back so you could put a battery in and get a 12 or 1300 this thing would be fantastic but because of the battery life it's difficult for me to say, yeah, go buy one. But if you can pick one up cheap, I think they're at Banggood at the minute for 60 odd pounds with a controller. If you can get one for that, then I'd recommend getting it, yeah. Because you're going to have a bit of fun with it and it does video. But you make your own mind up. You can see from the video that's coming up what the camera looks like and you can make your own mind up, like I said. So, have a fantastic day. Don't forget to get plenty of flying in and I shall see you soon.
thanks very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if you do please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell thanks for watching